So if you clicked on this video, it is because you're having an issue with your dog biting and this is a great place to be. So stick with me. Hey guys, my name is Jessica. I am the Furry Family Coach. I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And this, this video is all about dog and puppy biting. In this video, we are continuing our beginner dog training series. So if you are new to the beginner dog training series, if this is the very first video you have clicked on, there is a link in the description. Go back to the beginning of the beginner dog training series. I highly recommend you start from the beginning because there is a reason why these videos were made in this order. We need to build our bond. We need to build our communication with our dog before we can get into some of the harder things like this, like biting. I have so many people contact me about their puppy biting, or even if you've adopted a dog that's maybe not technically a puppy anymore, but they have never learned manners and they, you bring them into your house and they just are biting and you don't know what to do. And you feel like I, I have so many people contacting me. They feel like they have done everything the internet has told them to do and they can't figure it out. And again, that's why I encourage you to start from the beginning of the beginner dog training series because a lot of time, and you know, as, as humans, we have evolved, especially in this digital age, we have evolved to, oh, this is my issue, and this is how I, I'm just looking up how to solve this one issue. But so many times, we can't do that. We need to start, we need to build a foundation before we can tackle a bigger issue. And that is what I'm seeing so much with people and their dogs. They have an issue and they just want a quick fix to this issue. And they, they don't want to put in what it takes to build that communication, build that bond and trust with their dog. And even if you feel like you have a good bond and your dog trusts you, really, when you get into training, we need to we need to start and lay the groundwork for communication right so maybe you do maybe you and your dog absolutely love each other but they don't listen to you that's an issue right we need to be able to trust our dogs in the way that we know our dogs trust us and hopefully <laughs> the way our dogs trust us right so we need to be able to build that bridge of communication between two species that don't speak the same language. So I highly recommend that you do start from the beginning of the beginner dog training series, but let's get right into this video where we are talking about biting. So all throughout the beginner dog training series, I have talked over and over in the videos about not only using verbal cues, but also using your hands and hand signals because I feel like it is incredibly important for all of us to do this. And I haven't mentioned at all in the beginner dog training series anything about clicker training um, because I just, I, I'm not one of those people that prefer to use a clicker. I have tried clicker training and I, completely understand the the basis of beginner uh, of clicker training. So basically instead of using a verbal cue or in addition to using a verbal cue, we use a clicker which makes a loud noise that marks a behavior that we're asking in our dogs. Now, if you are at all interested in using a clicker, by all means go ahead. In my experience, more dogs than not don't like the sound of a clicker. And maybe that's, those are just the dogs that I have worked with and my own personal dogs. My own personal dogs, I have not in my entire lifetime had a dog that was not offended by the sound of a clicker. They did not like the sound of a clicker. So I know there are some quieter ones out there. Maybe, you know, if you have one and you're working with a dog with a clicker, that's great. I just want to encourage you that to, when the ideal time to use that clicker is the exact moment that your dog is exhibiting the behavior you're asking for when I'm telling you to give that verbal cue and you can use the clicker in addition to the verbal cue. I prefer using verbal cues and hand signals. That's just my thing. Um, so definitely, even if you are into clicker training, I highly recommend that you go through the beginner dog training series. Um, so I just did want to throw that in there because I know I haven't mentioned it at all yet um, through the whole beginner dog training series. And I think this is like video 10. So um, please forgive me for not having mentioned it prior to video 10. Okay, so when we're talking about biting in a dog, let me first get through the real talk, 
right? So especially if we're dealing with a puppy, it is a very natural thing for a dog, a puppy, to use their mouth. It's how they interact with the world. It could also be that they're teething. So those are really the two reasons that your dog or puppy may be biting or being mouthy, a lot of people call it, or using their mouth too much or in, in an inappropriate way. Uh, so they could either be teething or the reality is that that is the best way that dogs interact with the world is by using their mouth. They don't have, you know, opposable thumbs or fingers in per se in the way that we do. So they, they use their mouth to interact with everything in the world. So the first thing I want to say is that making sure your dog is getting adequate exercise is going to help immensely in decreasing this behavior in your dog. Now, that isn't to say that you don't need to do any additional training, you do, but I do just want to mention, because a lot of times people overlook this aspect of training, is that your dog, and, and every dog is different, but your dog needs an adequate amount of both physical and mental exercise in a day. This is where, this is so often, where we find behavior problems arising is because our dogs are not, their needs aren't being met. If you have a puppy, a dog that has not reached full physical maturation, so their joints aren't completely uh, put together, right? Like their, their body is still forming. And this is very, very true in young puppies. They, you, you really do have to mediate the amount of exercise that young puppies get because it can be detrimental to their joints in the long run. The rule of thumb here is that your dog should have five minutes of exercise once or twice a day per month of age. And once your dog is fully maturated and all, all of their bones and joints are in place and have fully formed, then you, you and your dog can figure out an appropriate amount of exercise for them, both, both mental and physical exercise. I wanna, I wanna get that in there. Because a lot of dogs, there are some breeds of dogs that really do need quite a bit of physical exercise and that is okay. Uh, there are some dogs that are bred to not need quite as much, much exercise. So you and your dog are gonna really have to feel each other out on this one uh, because every dog is different. But as a puppy, rule of thumb is about five minutes of exercise once or twice a day per month of age. So a three month old puppy should exercise for up to 15 minutes once or twice a day. And I, and when I'm saying exercise, I'm meaning like running around and really, you know, getting that blood pumping, getting that heart rate going, just as we think of exercise for ourselves, right? So be very aware of where your dog is biologically and when how their joints are forming because we really can that this can be detrimental to uh, joint health in the future if you feel like your dog knee or your puppy needs more exercise than that we can also give them uh, mental exercises in the form of enrichments um, so these are going to be really incredibly helpful in just keeping your dog calmer um, which is going to help with so many behavioral issues. Now, before I get too far into this video, I do want to mention that I have another video on my channel that I will link in the description below. It is all about dog bite inhibition and specifically the, the title of the video says that it is for deaf dogs, but I talk about both dogs that can hear and deaf dogs. And I was very, very fortunate that my very first dog that I ever adopted on my own, um, long story, uh, but I do tell the story in that video, so make sure you check out the description below to get to that video and watch all about it. I, my very first dog, Claire, that I adopted uh, wound up, turns out that she was deaf. So I learned a lot from her, and that is another reason why I like to use hand signals in addition to verbal cues. Okay, so I definitely recommend that the very next video you check out is that puppy bite inhibition video on my channel. Again, I will have it linked in the description below. There are so many really great tips in that video as well as the story about Claire. So um, the best thing to do, the absolute best thing to do when your dog is being too mouthy, maybe they, they're putting their mouth on you and they are just biting down a little bit too hard and those puppy teeth, man, those puppy teeth can hurt. 
the very best thing that you can do is to say ow and pull away. Now, as I tell you in the other video, especially if you have a deaf dog, the best thing to do is to pull your hands away from your dog and I like to use a motion like this, meaning, no, you need to be gentle, right? Pull away. Even the, one of the things that you can do, if you need to take it up a notch, is to actually remove yourself. You can go into another room, you can just go and move away on the couch. It is gonna be very important during this phase of puppy biting that you do play with your dog often and you may be inclined to not play with your dog often because they are biting but really it, and even though it may sound odd the best thing you can do is to play with your dog often because these are teaching opportunities these are moments that you need to be with your dog to teach them the appropriate thing to do so the more you are with your dog on this and the more you are working with your dog on this these are opportunities for you to train your dog and teach them what is appropriate and what is not appropriate so pull your hand away if if you would like to go ahead and say ow in kind of a high pitched tone like that don't be mean don't don't make it sound angry just a high pitched little squeal tone like i just did um this is going to mimic a tone that their litter mates might make because i'm finding and and i think a lot of trainers see this dogs are especially dogs that are are bred or dogs that are unfortunate enough that um, they wind up in a shelter they tend to be adopted out or sold around eight weeks of age. Preferably, a dog would be able to stay with its mother and litter mates through 12 weeks of age because they're really learning so much in this time frame from their mom, from their litter mates. And bite inhibition, how, just how hard they should and shouldn't bite during play is one of those things that they learn from their mother and from their litter mates. And when you take them away, four weeks, a whole month early. I mean, this is at, at eight weeks of age. I mean, from eight weeks to 12 weeks of age, that's an entire third of their lifespan that they didn't get all those learning experiences. So it's very common that we now are the ones that have to teach our puppies bite inhibition because they were taken away from their mother and litter mates a whole third of their life too early. Um, it, it is preferable that they would stay with their mother and litter mates up until 12 weeks of age, just so they can learn so much more than they, than they have during the first eight weeks of age. So bite inhibition and doing that, that kind of loud screechy ow kind of um, sound as long as your dog can hear is perfectly fine. You can use that. If your dog cannot hear, again, I like using the um, cue here where we're just rubbing the top of our hand and this means gentle, right? So if your dog, and then go back, take 10 or 15 seconds, right? Away from your dog, letting them know that what they did was not okay. So go, go right back 10 or 15 seconds later and start playing with your dog again. As long as they are remaining gentle, as long as they're playing gently, um, then Go ahead and reward. I like to use a thumbs up if your dog is deaf. Yes, this is good, right? Yes, gentle. Yes, gentle. Good, good, good. We're gonna keep playing. Um, another thing that you can and should do, if your dog starts being a little too mouthy and getting your skin in their mouth and you don't want them to, completely understandable, right? We don't want to teach them that biting is an okay behavior. We want to redirect them to a toy. So if, if they, their mouth winds up on your hand, we're gonna redirect them to a toy and alternate different kinds of toys, especially during this teething phase with your puppy, right? So they, when they're teething, they need relief from everything, all this like all this stuff going on in their mouth where, uh, you know, their puppy teeth are coming in and, and are, you know, larger teeth are coming in, maybe puppy teeth are falling out. Um, it's, it's uncomfortable. So teething is very, very natural. So try different kinds of toys, different. Um, my dog prefers these stuffed toys that have the squeakers inside of them. And uh, these are the ones that she likes, but try rope toys. Try, you know, those uh, rubberized like Kong toys for, uh, especially for larger dogs. They may really like that sensation when they bite down on it, especially if they are teething. Try different kinds of toys, try different textures of toys. 
and your dog is going to find one that they prefer. Maybe, maybe today they prefer one and tomorrow they're having a different kind of pain in their mouth so they're going to prefer a different type of toy. So make sure you are um, you know, switching things up and trying different toys. You can even use things like, you can even take like hand towels and things like that. Um, you can also take yummy treats or I like to, oh, there are so many wonderful treats that you can make. Um, I will link some of those recipes that are on my YouTube channel in the description below, especially ones that you can freeze. Those are going to be really great to help soothe a, uh, a teething puppy's gum lines, um, but that can be a treat, a reward for after playtime. So when your dog is being gentle, playing, continuing to play is the reward in itself, right? So um, redirecting them and, and pulling yourself away when they're not doing what it is they should be doing. So if they're being mouthy, you're gonna pull yourself away. Again, I highly recommend you check out the other video in my channel. I don't want to make this one go too long. Um, uh, about biting, bite inhibition. Again, the link is in the description below. What else can we do for puppy biting? I mean, it is a very natural behavior. It is something that we are all gonna have to go through when if we have a puppy. So the other thing we can do when our dog starts being a little too mouthy and biting is to actually switch gears completely. And instead of playing, we're gonna change what we're doing and we are going to initiate a training session. Again, why the big, the beginner dog training series, all the videos before this one were so important to watch before this one is because we learned so many things. We learned sit, we learned stay, we learned up, we learned down, we learned so many things. If you've gone through the entire beginning dog training series with your dog, you now have an arsenal of cues in your back pocket to start training with your dog anytime they are being a little too mouthy if you want to alternate. So today we are going to, if our dog is being too mouthy, we're going to continue playing, we're going to pull ourselves away and let them know what they did was not okay, come back and play again as long as they're being gentle. Maybe tomorrow, if they are being a little too mouthy, we're going to switch things up and we're going to say, you know what, if you can't play properly, then this is what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to switch, right? We're going to switch their brain from play mode to learning mode and we're going to switch over to a training session and we are this is important to have treats around for this we're going to switch over to a training session because we're going to we're going to flip their brain right they're they're in play mode but they're not behaving appropriately so we're going to switch their brain over to training mode for just a little while we're going to get them to do a couple of cues maybe a sit maybe a stay maybe a up or a down maybe a lie down, uh, depending on, you know, what has come easy for you and your dog thus far. And we're going to reward that behavior with treats. We're going to go back to, I, I'm giving you a cue. You are doing the behavior I'm asking for, and I'm going to reward for it. Now, after you do that, you can go right back to the training. Um, after you do that for a couple of minutes, you can go right back to playing, right? That can be a reward for them doing whatever behavior you've asked of them well. Go right back to playing. As long as they're being gentle, we're gonna continue playing. If they start being a little, little too mouthy again, we're gonna pull back, we're gonna pull away, we're gonna say, ouch, we're gonna rub our hand, let them know that they need to be gentle, pull our hands away, it's not okay for them to be mouthy and biting. This really is the very best way for you to teach your dog bite inhibition or when they cannot be biting you. Of course, during play, we don't want them biting us. Now, I hear a lot from people, I've tried this, I've tried this. How long did you try this for? This isn't something that is going to, you know, we're not gonna flip a switch and all of a sudden overnight, your dog is no longer gonna be mouthy, right? Especially if we're in the teething phase. This can last, you need to be patient, you need to be persistent, you need to be consistent and positive. Teething can last for up to six months. So we really need to be patient with our dogs. Just continue, make sure you're, you are always responding in the same ways. Make sure that you are not losing your temper because that is not helpful in these situations. And be patient, be consistent in what you're doing, be positive because your dog really is doing the best they can. Especially when we take into consideration what we're giving to our dog, right? So they're doing the very best they can with what we have provided for them. And, you know, it's uncomfortable to be teething. So 
understand that teething can take some time for a puppy and just be consistent. Just be consistent. You will get through this. Let me say that again for those of you that need to hear it. You will get through this. It's going to be okay. So take all of this into consideration. Make sure to check out the other video on dog bite inhibition uh, that is on my channel. I will link it in the description below. Thank you so much again for being here. If you haven't already, if you didn't watch from the beginning of the, the beginner dog training series, the link is in the, for the playlist. The link for the playlist is in the description below. Check it out from the very beginning all the way through. I highly recommend you do that. Um, thank you so much for being here with me today. Let me know, post in the comments below and let me know what made you click on this video. Why are you here? Why are you um, going through the beginner dog training series? If you haven't already let me know on another video or even if you want to provide me with an update, I would love to know uh, any updates that you have on your progression through the beginner dog training series. Post that in the comments below and let me know. Also, if you haven't already joined the group. The link is in the description below to join the group, join the family. That's going to be the best way for you to communicate directly with me. You can post pictures, you can post videos, you can let me know what you're working on. Maybe if you're getting stuck on something or if you need help with something or celebrate the wins, right? I'm not the only one in the group. There's, it's a, it's a big group. There are thousands of people that are there to help you, that are there to support you, that are there to cheer you on, especially if you do share your wins with us. So join the group. I would love to have you. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button right down there. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me, Jessica, the Free Family Coach, and I will see you in our next video.